The date was Ju July 5th, 2011. Excitement could be felt all over the capital. It was Venezuela's Independence Day. There were military marches, horse parades, and weapons displays. Military planes pierced the sky above the city. As part of the celebration, there was going to be a major El Sistema concert in the Plaza Diego Ibarra in Caracas. The musicians were filing in through the backstage dressed in black with the Venezuelan flag's colors around their necks. In front of the regular public entrance, a line of crowdy people, some visibly drunk, stretched for three blocks. Gustavo Dudamel, the, the Venezuelan prodigy in the conducting world and an offspring of El Sistema, was rehearsing with the musicians and, and the choir in his t-shirt. When rehearsal was over and the gates opened, people started flowing in ever-increasing waves, running to occupy the be better seats. I turned around and saw that I was in, in the middle of a political rally. Everyone was wearing red paraphernalia, red flags, shirts and headbands reading Palante Comandante, Forward Commander, slogans associated with pre President Hugo Chavez's socialist revolution. As they played, the musicians swayed their instruments left to right in time with the music. The 1,000 singers in the choir held one another's hands up in the air. Hundreds of people around me jumped up to dance, sing along, and hold hands. A multitude of people stretched well beyond the edge of the plaza. A fountain nearby lit up in the colors of the Venezuelan flag, water splashing around it. Then fireworks gloriously spilled over the sky, each shot overshadowing the sound of human voices and instruments. Confetti fell over, all over and people screamed in ecstasy. Two big screens with Chavez's smiling, waving image flanked the stage. After the event, a violinist who had played in the concert told me, quote, this concert was a dream come true after all the effort I had put into being there. I just became aware I was part of, part of something so very beautiful, end quote. Naya, a pianist, remarked, quote, I know there would be a convincing message for the, this country's youth. I'm sure many children said to themselves after this concert, I want to play in a symphonic orchestra. Damien, a friend who had, was not part of the event, said he wished he had been, been able to participate. That surprised me because this was mostly a political manifestation and I knew Damien did not support the government. Why, to play in honor of your comandante, I joked. No, he smiled, in honor of Venezuela. El Sistema is a state-funded classical music education program that aims to combat socioeconomic marginalization and violence by providing free music education to half a million young people across the country. El Sistema is a mixed income group where 67% of the participant come, participants come from the country's two poor, poorest social strata. El Sistema pulls together into a collaborative experience young people who are otherwise divided by social hierarchies and a socialist state discourse focused on class ideologies. In this presentation, I analyze how music may function within the structures of political power, while at the same time giving rise to dimensions of humor, <coughs> human interpersonal experiences that are in excess of the discursive regimes that seek most of all to control them. The polyphony of verbal reactions to the event I dis just described point to the space of excess generated by music. At the backdrop of a politically charged euphoria, the musicians emphasize their variety of responses. They had lived the ex exhilaration and beauty of taking part in such a gigantic event. Some emphasized the potential of this concert to attract more youth to a program that aspires towards a social utopia through music. For others, the idea of national belonging was ch channeled through the music, not through political slogans. In thinking about the multiplicity of experiences that can be associated with the same musical sign and coexist in the same material space, I propose an affirmative multi-layered approach in the study of music. It implies a consciousness of the larger discursive political and cultural structures which sway human lives, but also calls for a detailed focus on experience, the meaning that the actor himself attaches to his actions and experiences. Philosopher Theodore Adorno has prominently discussed the indispensable links between aesthetics and society, promoting the idea of negative dialectics, that art needs to function as a weapon of resistance to the status quo and stimulate a critical engagement with sociopolitical reality. I trouble the notion of negative dialectics and propose an affirmative non-dialectic approach to the study of music. It is a concept that stems from the ideas of Gilles Deleuze, whose philosophy is fundamentally opposed to critical thought in the tradition of negative dialectics. The lens of affirmative non-dialectics sheds light on how aesthetics can pro transform people's everyday experiences of social reality. I analyze how classical music and contemporary Venezuela may sim simultaneously serve as a conduit of political power, state power, but also through the ambiguity of the musical sign create social assemblages across surprising and political and social boundaries. Could these spaces of experience and interaction outside the confines what is so, of what is socially and political available be seen as in themselves a challenge to the status quo? 
These questions acquired urgent significance in Venezuelan society, which has historically been characterized by soci socioeconomic inequality and more recently political polarization and everyday violence. In 1998, Venezuela began to go through a period of transformation known as the Bolivarian Revolution, which at the beginning of the 21st century came to define its agenda as socialist. Though poverty and inequality rates were, rates were alleviated the, during the Bolivarian Revolution, these years also have been accompanied by a political discourse that antagonizes class divisions, which are still very much in place, high rates of inflation, and a homicide rate that is among the highest in the world. Since its founding, El Sistema has enjoyed the continuous support from the, from the oil-rich state, weathering the vo volatile political climate of seven changes in government. However, state support of El Sistema reached a historical climax during the socialist president, Hugo Chavez, and after his death in March 2013, of his chosen successor, Nicolás Maduro. In 2007, El Sistema became part of Misión Musica, one of the current uh, gov socialist government's anti-poverty initiatives, and hence the recipient of millions of petrodollars of funding. The philosophy of El Sistema to make a traditionally elite genre of music available to the masses and become an instrument for, for social change is very much in line with the main goals of the socialist government. Furthermore, the government celebrates El Sistema as a solution to the most pressing social problems such as violence and drug abuse. The importance of this course to the revolution and with respect to El Sistema became clear to me when I, I interviewed Beatrice Sanso de Ramirez, director of cultural branch of PDVSA, the state-owned oil and gas, natural gas company, and one of the major funding sources for, for El Sistema. She explained to me El Sistema's obligation to PDVSA. In the cases we need immediate cooperation, for example, we tell the musician, listen, I need you to offer a concert in this and this barrio, and then they go and do so, obviously, without being paid. El Sistema is a way to legitimize our socialist revolution abroad, since Oder Ramirez concluded, periodically touching my hand to emphasize her point. So many attacks, so much media boycotting, but El Sistema is an achievement that cannot be obscured. When international audiences go to an El Sistema concert, they exclaim in dismay, this was created by the revolution, end quote. These words, uh, words speak to how the socialist government fixes and gears the meaning of music to its own political mission and vocabulary. El Sistema's relationship th with the state placed it in an increasingly uncomfortable position in February and March of 2014, as student-led anti-government protests, the greatest challenge to the socialist government in 10 years, gripped the streets of Venezuela. As people on both sides of the political spectrum voiced their political positions, the spotlight of public attention fell on El Sistema, which remained silent. On February 12th, Gustavo Dudamel conducted a concert in honor of National Youth Day, at which state officials were present, while a few blocks down the road, the street, two protesters were killed, the first two of a dozen to be killed in the next few months. Gabriela Montero, a Venezuelan pianist living abroad, wrote an open letter condemning El Sistema, silence and saying, no, no more excuses, no more artists are above and beyond everything, no more we do it for the kids. Gustavo Dudamel responded, with our music and with our instruments in hand, we declare an absolute no to violence and a resounding yes to peace. Even as Dudamel conducted, however, other El Sistema students were out in the streets protesting for months afterwards. I joined them on several occasions. Some were even on the front ranks of the protest, handkerchiefs <coughs> soaked in vinegar wrapped around their mouth and nose in order to be able to throw the tear gas right back at the police during the street confrontations between civilians and the state. Jorge, a violinist, had repeatedly escaped being detained by the National Guard. He told me this wouldn't stop him from protesting. The more they repress us, put us in jail, shoot at us, and kill us, the desire to keep going out on the street will grow. We are the voice of a people who are tired of being made fun of for thinking differently from their erroneous politics. How do you feel being part of El Sistema that, be that belongs to the very state you're so angry at? I asked him. I make music because I'm a musician. I'm paid for my labor as part of El Sistema because we're an institution that re represents the country. We don't represent any one government as such. My responsibility in music is to the country and my responsibility on the street is to the country as well. These are two different roles. The evening after one of the protests, Clara, Naya's mother, called me on the phone. Intuitive as always, she seemed to have guessed that I had been at the protests with the other musicians. If I'm a musician and the state gives me a salary and pays for my trips, the food and everything, do you think I should be protesting against that state, she asked me? Do you think I have a right to behave like this? Many kids at El Sistema protest and will, st will the state kick them out of El Sistema? No, the state will not kick them out because the state is respectful. This El Sistema came to be because of this revolution, because of President Chavez, who knows that art makes people better. 
Before that, one had to wear fancy clothing to the theater or they wouldn't let you in." End quote. The last phone call of the evening was with Damien. Uh, I was sure he had reached, uh, I, I was making sure he had reached home safely after the protests. Los bichos no tenían compasión. The animals didn't have any compassion, he said, referring to police violence against them, the protesters. Hearing Jorge, Clara, and Damien's voices one after the other, all involved in El Sistema, yet with such different uh, positions with respect to the state and what it means to be Venezuelan, illustrated the polarization and contradictions of Venezuelan society. According to Clara, the opportunities given by El Sistema had to be paid with gratitude and loyalty towards the state. Born in a working class family and having suffered the humiliation of poverty, Clara claimed that President Chavez and the socialist government had given her and many others opportunities that would not have dreamed of otherwise. In conversations, she often express, expressed sentiments of love and affection towards the socialist <laughs> state. Jorge and Damien, also from lower middle class backgrounds, had come to Caracas on El Sistema scholarships and had, as a consequence, undergone upward social mobility with respect to their families. <clears throat> Though entirely dependent on El Sistema for their social status, everyday security, in the relatively calm and structured life of music making in an increasingly precarious country, they did not equate loyalty to music and the institution with royal loyalty towards a government they felt free to resent. Their voices and positions as citizens were not stifled by a sense of obligation to the socialist state. <clears throat> Both spoke of a duty to a motherland, but the motherland land they imagined radically diverged from the image painted by the socialist party. During Easter, Damien called me from his parents' home, a small village in Venezuela. He was thrilled to give oboe classes to one particularly talented student, just a few years younger than him. But apart from that, he was feeling restless while on vacation. I need to be teaching, making music, or throwing bombs at the police in order to feel useful. It's my land, my homeland, I need to fight, he said with useful conviction. Horrified by Damien's acts of violence against the police, Nai asked me indignantly, how can he do that? Is he Venezuelan or what? A week later, I saw Jorge and Damien at a concert. Donning black suits and ties, they both looked impeccable, a stark contrast to the suit-covered clothing they had sported at the protests. It was difficult to believe that the same hands that were so caringly handling the violin and the oboe had been throwing stones at the police just hours before that. Damien, excited to be playing for his oboe, was pouring his soul into the instrument, his right eyebrow lifting up from time to time as if carried away by an excessive expressivity. They were creating and inhabiting a world that levitate, levitated, adjacent to the reality of the streets. The, the experiential significance, significance of this musical experience resonates with Deleuze's notion of becoming. Those individual and collective struggles to come to terms with events and intolerable conditions and to shake loose to whatever degree possible from determinants and definitions. End quote. Aesthetic practice cultivates the predisposition towards letting oneself be affected, changed, swayed, and overwhelmed by beauty. Music's ambiguity, the air of being unresolved, the uncertainty of where it leads to, opens the door to, doors to multiple resignifications. Philosopher Jean-Luc Nancy makes a distinction between the notion of listening and that of hearing. Quote, to be listening is always to be on the edge of meaning, end quote. In straining towards meaning, listening is distinguished from hearing, which is characterized by being fixed, predetermined, and coded. The language of political discourse in framing music within its own vocabulary is limited and limits to hearing and to fixity. The experience of music spills beyond that. It is open-ended and contradictory, where different melodies and meanings intersect, clash, harmonize, and resonate. Thank you.